All right, welcome back there. Pikachu had to get her Charmander, <laughs> and uh, we're ready to go. So, this is the block that we've been dreading. This is the block with the infamous puzzle, oh, and you'll see what we're talking about shortly. This is probably just one of the most infamous puzzles in all of adventure gaming, so let's sit back and get ready. Why? Do we have to? If we need to progress for the fans, if we die, we die. <laughs> The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. Looks like the moped shop is open. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> so Wilkes is riding off on an orange moped. I don't know how the hell that thing contained him, but... <laughs> well, before we start this wonderful puzzle, we're going to do something that many walkthroughs uh, skip over. Uh, we're going to go to Tor Magdala and talk to uh, uh, Signore Bucchelli. But first, Villa Bethania. Let's go ahead and go there. Villa Bethania. Personal residence constructed by Sonier. He's the one who got rich and started the rumors about a treasure. It says, keep out, more or less. And what's cool is they got uh, some interesting patterns on the door, but I won't give them away. So let's go inside. <laughs> the sign says, do not enter. I'd at least need a reason to ignore it. Alright, so now we're going to go around this corner, and we're heading to Tor Magdala which is another real tower, and it does look like this. It's basically a uh, fortress-like looking building with the tower sticking up on the other side of it. Tour Magdala. Which is Magdalene Tower. Police car going by, so... Yeah. Let's wait for it to pass here. Whee! They oh, they stopped. <laughs> yeah. They know! <laughs> they must know about the prostitution ring. Uh, I told you to stop cooking the crack in the kitchen. <laughs> Cocaine them. <laughs> Good old Arnold. <laughs> All right, we're gonna look at the. <laughs> we're, gonna look <laughs> we're gonna look at this window over here. Windows. Hey, I bet those come in handy. Very shiny. And then here's a chair. Seats at the window hence the name window seats window seats let's sit down not right now thanks oh you always say that bookcases the books are all old and french <laughs> now the interior more or less does look like this. There are some uh, bookcases in here. More than likely, they were Sonier's uh, works. Actually, they are. I'm sorry. I'm sound like a tour guide right now, trying to sound mysterious. <laughs> All right, so let's go up the, the twisty staircase up the tower. Kind of reminds me of the House of Lament and our Ravenloft RP. <laughs> All right, and there's Bukele, and he's got his Binox out. But before we talk with him, look at this little decoration. It's just a decorative post, I guess. <laughs> it's a very pretty post. And it exists, too. By the way, it's real. They got this tower down to a T in the real life. I was surprised. All right, let's look at Bukele. Bukele sure gets around, especially for someone who doesn't want to be here. <laughs> Let's talk with him. Signore Buccelli, hey, what's up? Hello, Mr. Knight. Um, I was just uh, taking in the view. It's a lovely view up here, no? Yeah, especially with Binox. See anything interesting? Only God's splendor, my friend. Oh, right. That. <laughs> oh, so he's, yeah. He's taking a look around, all right. So we're going to leave the tower, and now we are going to go to the moped shop. Oh, no. Oh. No. <laughs> 
be a man. You're embarrassing yourself. How can you possibly do this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going into the moped courtyard. And let's look at the Harley. Oh, check out that Harley. Wow, I'd love to drive that baby. You want to go on a date with it? <laughs> <laughs> and then here's our favorite little moped over here. What a pathetic excuse for that. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take a look around the uh, Envians. So here's a uh, barrel. Looks like an accident waiting to happen. Mm. Kind of like my life. Gonna go to this door Somebody here. Somebody lives there. Probably someone with a penchant for rusty barrels. <laughs> Let's take a look at some other rusty barrels. A trash heap. That's one way to draw a crowd. Of flies, anyway. <laughs> then we're taking a look at some other bikes. I need to rent a bike. A bike. Hmm. <laughs> That must be where they repair the bikes. Repair the bikes? What were you saying? As long as it's not ugly and purple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Like this bike here? <laughs> you may have this little bike. <laughs> I it was purple, but, uh, that one looks awful. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. She can't even see and she knows it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to look at the sign here. It's a moped rental shop. All right. Now, hopefully, a uh, little side note here. I should have mentioned this before we started, but I turned the volume down on my microphone because I know my voice is booming in it, and I'm a loud talker. So, <laughs> so hopefully, uh, hopefully, we can hear the game better when it speaks, and you can hear me at a lower level. I apologize in advance for ruining any air drums. Please don't sue. <laughs> All right, now now look, it's like hashtag me too, my eardrums. You hurt my eardrums. I'm taking you to court like Stormy Daniels. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna look at the door. Right, they're open. We're gonna look at this. Uh, here, I'm gonna quote Patrick Bateman. We're gonna look at this faggot over here. <laughs> right, they're open. And it's the same thing. Yes, you said that. So there's a list of reservations. It's a reservation list for the bikes. I'm not on it. So I was finishing my caffeine there. You're very rude. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk to this guy with all the tats and the big Coke bottle frame glasses polishing a pipe. Hey, how you doing? I want to rent a bike. What? Oui. Your passport, please. Shows it to him. Uh, Monsieur Knight, you are not with the tour group? I do not see you on my list. No, nope. I'm on my own. Ah, I am sorry, Monsieur, but most of my fleet is reserved for the tour group. What? I have one little bike left, Monsieur, but she is nothing grand. I show you. Here she is. <laughs> this piece of crap. Oh, come <laughs> on. I was kind of hoping for this baby. Ooh, what is this? A WW2 army issue? Oui, but the tour group reservations were made first. It is this little bike, monsieur, or nothing. Well, who gets the Harley? Whoever chooses it first, monsieur. If none of the others want the large bike, you may have it. Oh, yeah, like that's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, let me know what you decide. Likely. <laughs> All right. So after that disappointment, it gives you an option to uh, shoot him. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I know I've played this game so many times, but that always gets me. <laughs> yeah. Well, here you go. Let's let's select that, and here you go. I don't have a gun. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. Folks didn't take that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and talk to him again. I'm not gonna be able to charm my way into that Harley. I'll have to think of something else. So let's look at the th light bulb. Well, I'm not on the reservation list, but I know someone who is. <laughs> he looks at the light because it's not a lamp. <laughs> let's look at the bike again. Man, I really want that bike. 
I'm back! Let's look at the crap bike again. I wouldn't be caught dead on that bike. <laughs> a thing like that can ruin a guy's self-esteem permanently. Yeah. <laughs> Under the weight of his bulging muscles. <laughs> I think it would fall apart even if a girl was trying to ride it. It's bad. Well, we know somebody that rides it just fine. Okay. <laughs> so... If you are basically playing from scratch, you kind of want to hear and listen in on clues from earlier um, conversations of investigation. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go back to the museum and we're going to go... Well, here, hold on just a second here. Oh, that tree's blocking the way. Go away, tree. <laughs> so let's go inside. Oh yeah, we got to make them walk here, so... There we go. Then let's have them go up the stairs. There we go. We must visit the really pleasant <sighs> <laughs> no, we don't have to visit her, fortunately. So we're going to go Lost the Found, and uh, if you remember earlier, sounds like something Mosley would wear. Well, that's what we're going to do. Hmm, I suppose this hat might be useful after all. So there you go. Alright, so we take the red cap. And we're getting the hell out of Dodge. As much as I love that music, we gotta get out of there. Get ready to defy the uh, logics of uh, everything. Oh, how should I put this? Cubic capacity. But anyway, mm -hmm. we're gonna go back into the graveyard here, and we're seeing. Abbe Arno is doing his middle minimalistic gardening. Looks like Arno has a green thumb. <laughs> and we can see inside his little parish there. There's a bookcase, a single bed, and then he's got what looks like a mini bar, but it's probably just a mini kitchen. So let's uh let's knock on the door. Yeah, I could bug him, but maybe I'll wait until he's out and about. But he's outside. <laughs> and what's funny is you never ever get inside here. You never get to get inside the parish here, but whatever. So we're gonna look at the spritzer. The abbe left his spritzer behind. Spritzer behind. <laughs> and we're gonna take the spritzer behind. Or <laughs> worthy goes. And we're gonna shove it up the cat's spritzer behind. <laughs> All right. We love cats, by the way. <laughs> I had a cat live to be 19, but I had to put him down, sadly, because of his kidneys. But he lived a good life. Cute orange kitty. Yep. Rest in peace, orange fuzz butt. <laughs> so, we're going back around the corner here. Now, normally you're not supposed to come back here early, but I did it anyway just to kind of show it off because Pikachu loves kitties so much. So the cat's on top of the uh, wall here, and I love his uh, comment here. He doesn't look real thrilled to see me. <laughs> All right, so I, I know this is going to look crazy, but uh, here, let's do a thought on the cat and not the uh, T-H-O-T. I kind of like that squeezing through the hole bit. I wonder if I could get him to do it again. All right, here we go. So, grab the masking tape. I know. Put it on the hole. Hmm, that's a tight squeeze, but the cat hasn't left any fur behind on those boards. He might, though, with a little help. And you kind of wonder, how the hell are you supposed to figure this out? I actually had to look. This is the one, uh, uh, I'll be honest, this is the one of two times I cheated in this game. I had to look this part up because I was stuck like no tomorrow. Yeah, so you put the t masking tape on above the hole there. I know, no, he, I know, hear me out. So here's what happens. This is the, this black magic marker is basically going to be used later but here's what we're going to do we're going to take the spritzer and use it on the cat but oh let's try petting the cat first i can't get up there okay so we're going to use the spritzer behind on the cat <laughs> here we go he runs off, oh, and 
and he rouses because his fur got caught up. So we're gonna take the masking tape back. Ugh, no, 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 no. It worked. <laughs> Yay! Now why in the fuck would you be doing that, Gray Fox? Tell us, tell us. If we never played the game, so here's what you do: you take the syrup and you use it on the mustache or on the fur to make a mustache no so you the syrup puts the fur together it's a black mustache Ew. sort of yeah <laughs> then you combine it with the red cap so we're getting things going here so that's 97 points so yeah <laughs> Wait a minute. A hat and a mustache? You're making a... Do you want me to say it? Go for it. Disguise! Yeah. But why? We know somebody who's on the tour. So yeah, the subtle clues basically of this was... You know, like you could... If you were lost, you could do this. Like usually you could click on the hint box, but they only do that later on for a certain uh, map you have to solve, but I won't go into detail on that yet there. So yeah, it's... We've pretty much completed two major tasks of it. Now it's time for the death-defying part of it. No. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the hotel next. And we're going to have a chat and then begin the... <sighs> it's so nefariously stupid. Two final pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk to the ladies. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to ask him about the uh, room change. I noticed y'all moving suitcases around upstairs. Was there a problem with your room? Oh, my, yes. But that wasn't why we moved, Lily. No. Mr. Barza kindly offered to exchange with us. He's a Muslim, you see. Wanting to be facing east and all that. Well, Estelle and I are very much in favor of supporting the cultural differences between us, aren't we, darling? Yes, Lily. And it's a much nicer room. It's larger and has a balcony. Of course, I do appreciate the sacrifice. But then there are two of us and only one of Mr. Barza. And I'm sure he's used to stuffier quarters. Middle Easterners so often are, you see. Yeah, I've uh, heard that. Yeah, don't break your back uh, with all that virtue signaling there. We support the other cultures yeah, until they uh, practically run you over with a car, stab you, throw acid in your face and everything. Yeah. Sorry, I know there's probably some UK watchers, but my, my heart goes out to you guys. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. And I'm not saying that to earn oppression points or moral superiority or anything. I, I really, really feel bad for you guys right now. So, but... Uh, that's neither here nor there. All right, so we're gonna go upstairs. You're such an Islamophobe, Gray Fox. I know. I'm, yes. I just totally, totally so hate awful. people. I hate people. I mean, I hate all Muslims and everything like that. I mean, if everybody else has a right to hate Christians, then why not? But you're not a Christian. Why did you say that? For some reason. <laughs> but you're not a Christian. How can you say that? Oh, it doesn't make a difference. At least they're not blowing things up or, you know, practically... Well, I take that back. They've done it before. But at least they're not beheading, you know, homosexuals or things like that. Unlike some people we know. Yeah. Now we're going to lose, like, all of our audience. Oh, my God, they hate Muslims. Ah. They hate the race of Muslims. Muslims not a race. Okay. Anyway, I got it out of my system. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get the candy armed with us. Oh, no. Could always taste it again. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, you shouldn't be funny. <laughs> so we're going to knock on Mosley's door.
Very slowly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the longest trek that gave us a take. Gotta work those cowboy boots. <laughs> and in we go. And what is it, Nat? So you can ask him about the passport. Say, you got a passport, Mose? Right here, doofus. Why? <laughs> oh, just want to make sure you keep it on you. You know what they say about hotel rooms in Europe? No. What do they say? Uh, don't leave your passports in them. Right. Well, Maddie already told us to keep them handy, but thanks so much for your concern. <laughs> Jeez, mostly he was trying to help you. <laughs> so now let's give the fat ass some candy. Want one of these, Mose? Sure. Dangles it and he takes it. <laughs> Pops it in his mouth. Thanks. But it's not a No <laughs> problem. Lard butt. Well, or fat free. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we are See off. Ya. Yeah, get out of here, you wanker. Wow. Alright. So, if that's not a hint for you. Now, this is something that you have to do. First, you grab the candy. Again? <sighs> yeah. This is really, really exasperating here. Okay. Oh, so, okay. you grab the candy. We're going to save real quick here. You mean we're going to let the game growl at us? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we go upstairs. All right. There we go. And... We're going to place the candy on this table here. All right. And then we're going to go back downstairs. And we are going to buzz him. <laughs> I could, but maybe I should wait until, until John's, John's elsewhere. elsewhere. Gotta hit when he does that. Okay, okay, now got John's going elsewhere, so we're gonna buzz. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to head upstairs, and he's going to come out of his room. So, go around the corner. As you can see, I, I went in the opposite direction so he wouldn't see me. He spots the candy. So now, we're going to sneak around the corner and peek. And he's fiddling with the candy. And it drops. So now his passport slips out of his butt. He pops it in his mouth. Even though he already had one. And you steal his passport. So now you're starting to see where we're going with this. So we're going to go into Mosley's room here. <laughs> and there's the gold blazer. Get ready for the most space-defying thing ever. Rolls up the blazer. Slides it in his pocket. He's got a bulge in the front of his pants. But wait, but wait. One, two, and smooth it out. Shake a leg. And move it all about! <laughs> so yeah, isn't that incredible? Gabe's got more space than a 10 terabyte hard drive in those jeans. <laughs> oh god, that's such a nerd joke. We will totally yeah. recognize you if somebody can give us a funny or useful explanation for how that works. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to combine the gold blazer with the hat disguise. Now that's a Mosley outfit. And then, last but not least, we are going to use Mosley's passport with the black marker to draw a mustache. That's better. <laughs> and the puzzle is done. The awfulness is complete. So as you can see, that is the stupidest <laughs> puzzle in any adventure game. If you know a better one, comment below. Yeah, please tell us. <laughs> We will totally read it. 
Oh, my God. Yeah. We, oh, we definitely will. We'll give shout-outs to people, leave comments. So don't be afraid. Yeah. Even if you want to call me as an Islamophobe or saxophone or xylophone or whatever, you know, even if you want to do that to Pikachu. If you want to say that, you know, Pikachu and I are horrible people, go for it. <laughs> We can we can cry in the next video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard some interesting uh, news that uh, Proto Magical Girl isn't going to be showing up at uh, at uh, Awesome Games Done Quick 2019. Thankfully. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he's going to be doing. It's funny too. He originally it. <laughs> Now this video is going to be taken down because of that. He doesn't take criticism really lightly. I mean, he considered Dan sexy to be weaponized violence. It's like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? It's yeah, just an emoticon. Can you explain that to me? I'm confused. Uh, you know, you, you know, it's funny. He wanted to go to. Uh, he wrote a letter to himself and hoped, hope you got into Notre Dame. And it's like, uh. <laughs> all right. So before we go on to that topic, which will be for another time in January, uh, we're going to go ahead and put on the disguise. No peeking. So now he's coming out wearing the red cap, the gold blazer, and the mustache. Oh, your God. And he tied his, and just tied his hair back. Hey, is this where y'all rent mopeds? Oh, yeah. May I see your passport? God. Oh, that face. Ah, Monsieur Mosley. Yes, I have a reservation How for you. One more mind. night. Here we go. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> you may have any bike in the lot, monsieur. I can. Hey, I guess I'll take this big old hog here. How much is that? 100 francs a day. Looks like we got us a deal. Deal. Well, monsieur, you pay when you return the bike. Golly, thanks. That actually isn't but wait, too bad of an the tour group gets my special treasure chest package. Woot. You get the binoculars and the shovel with that. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck, monsieur. If you strike it rich, you will remember poor little Bigo, will you not? That's right, I will not. <laughs> Thank you so much. Whew, man, the things I'll do for a decent back. Oh, I better put this stuff back before Mosley has a conniption. Mosley. <laughs> <laughs> so you put everything back where it goes, and you're outside of the hotel looking sharp again. All right, so now we can cruise. So let's exit the town. So if you ever want to leave, you don't actually have to go back to the moped courtyard. Uh, yeah, there we go. Right over here. All you have to do is just go over to the exit to run the chateau. Click on when you see the arrow shaped like that. Click on it. And here we go. I'll go get the Harley. Okay. So this is the map of the Valley Loop. So pretty cool travel music here. So basically there's going to be points that will continue. The more places you visit, the more points will show up. So basically, like right now, we got Cuisa Station. That's where we entered. Uh, you got Larry Chester's house, uh, Chateau de Blanchefort, uh, Ren Le Bon, and uh, that's about it for now. And then if you want to come back to Ren Le Chateau, you're fine there. The green button represents you, and then these two dots represent other people. So what we're going to do first is uh, we're going to go ahead and go over to Chateau de Blanchefort. So pull alongside here now we're not going to go anywhere just yet and you'll see why uh, but for now you can see they over here their mountains around here Mount Cardew so if you want to go on the trail I don't have my hiking boots on <laughs> now here's something funny you can stand in the middle of the road here and then yeah see Gabe automatically walks off If it's from the creek on the side there. Yeah, I think so. Because there's Wilkes. So check this out. What's cool is Wilkes react to you. As you can see, he actually looked over at you for a moment. Click on him and follow. So it's a little orange dot. Jeez. 
there's the chase music. Okay, so it's we're gonna go to Lermitage. And here's something nifty to do. Now, if you're a detective, if you're any like who done in any who done it or anything like that, and you're a detective, you gotta take notes of certain things. Now, what would you want to take notes of seeing a moped in the parking lot there? License plate. You got it. So we're gonna go right down Wilkes's license plate, and this will make sense later into seeing why we do this. Cracking my knuckles there, sorry. So Gabe's writing down the license plate. <coughs> Got there it. we go. <laughs> it's Wilkes' special thing. <laughs> and there's Madeline. what that means. We'll be following her next, obviously. All right, so we're going up here, and Wilkes is on his laptop, and he's got his thumping machine. It's a seismograph, but yeah, we'll get to that. So we're going to take a look over at the pillars and cave. It looks like a cave to me. Look at the sign. This little cave has been identified as Lermitage on regional maps for centuries, but the origins of its ownership and usage remain obscure. Wow, that's fascinating. I'll have to write home about that one. <laughs> so look at the pillars. Pillars outside a cave? Maybe Lermitage means weird ass architecture. <laughs> no Let's go in the cave. The last time I went poking around in a cave, I ended up with hair on my palms. <laughs> yeah. The beast within. <laughs> okay, so we can look at the seismograph. What the heck is that thing? I'm thinking, but it I haven't awful. a clue. <laughs> look at the computer. Wilkes's computer. How does he get his big fingers on those little keys? <laughs> and there's a thought. He's probably searching the web for the most macho contest results. You know, those are the guys who pick up automobiles with their teeth and cut off their own heads with chainsaws. He just looked the time. Yeah, strong man where you could like, they basically are like really strong people and they would pull trucks and things like that, like semi-trucks. They had that show on ESPN2 religiously when I was growing up. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at Wilkes. It's Wilkes, the Australian. Let's have a chat. Hey, Wilkes, how's it going? Peachy. What are you doing? Just taking in the sights. Lermitage. Uh, cute. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you can have a chat with them. Talk about the thumper. Say, mind if I ask about your machine? Yeah, I do. Oh, come on. What is it? You trying to call it a giant sandworm or what? For your information, Knight, <laughs> this is highly delicate scientific equipment. Yes, I was a worm thumper. Tremors, <laughs> anyone? <laughs> well, or something else with it that we'll get to in a moment. So, see anything headed this way? Should we head for the rocks? Shut the hell up, Knight. <laughs> Here we go. Look, it's a giant worm. Get out the harpoons. <laughs> <laughs> and the ah, explosives. Right. This is a seismic survey machine, Knight. Now shut the hell up before I thump you. A seismic survey machine? What's it do? Forget it, Knight. Get your own damn theory. Okay. So before we begin this, uh, Pikachu was actually incorrect on Tremors. It was based off the movie Dune. So. A joke. Oh. Oh. Okay. Wow, you made a joke. That's a good one. A joke. <laughs> but anyway, regardless, it's off the movie Dune. Um, the 1984. Four, I want to say 84 85 versions really good um, it's obscure and it's bizarre and it's loosely affiliated with the books yeah, but book. yeah but uh, it's pretty cool and um, 
basically they uh, write worms on it with a badass soundtrack uh, check it out i mean just try it at least check it out at least once uh, you'll probably be weirded out by it but at the same time you'll probably be mesmerized it's got a uh, it's got a great soundtrack a decent cast too like sean young who played um Excuse me. Sean Young played in uh, Blade Runner in that, basically, as Rachel. And uh, she plays uh, the love interest of the yeah, the young duke in it, <laughs> of uh, Paul. And uh, then there was also the, uh, I forgot her actress's name, but the school teacher who was in uh, Kindergarten Cops in it. Uh, yeah. uh, Patrick Stewart's in it, which is really cool. Um, you know, really, it's really, really fun. Sting's in it, of course. And uh, he's one of the antagonists, one of the, uh, one of the, the, um, oh, it's been so long since I've watched it. Um, yeah, you know, every Dune fan right now is like, how dare you, Harkonnen, there we go. Oh, I had to think of that for a moment. Sorry about that, Dune fans. My dad would be ashamed of me right now. It's one of his favorite movies. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, plot's pretty how decent. Dare you? And at the end, uh, I mean, I won't spoil it, but at the end, I, you know, if you're, if you've seen the movie, um, you know, what's said at the end, it's like, and how can this be? And it sounds like she says, he is the Quiznos hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> so go back and watch it and just kind of think that line and you'll probably agree <laughs> all right well let's talk about the treasure with wilkes now you really think there's a treasure out here oh there's a treasure all right yeah what do you think it is you know what sonia's girlfriend said Dad? people are walking around on gold and don't even know it the romans mind is back then they knew how to use slave labor right Plus all them kings that was around. Those guys had regular hordes of valuables, and some of it's bound to have gotten lost. Well, I... I guess so. And the bloke that finds it is going to be flat out stinking rich. I'll tell you a secret, mate. That bloke is going to be me. So we can ask again about the treasure? You seem pretty sure about finding that treasure. That's right. But I ain't going to tell you about it. So don't ask. And then we can ask about the Holy Grail. So, um, you don't think the treasure's related to the Grail? Holy Grail. Yeah, that's a right one. Did you know the Nazis crawled all over this valley looking for it? No. What a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> hey, I was thinking, if I find an old enough cup, right, maybe one with some jewels and shit on it, I could pass it off for the Grail. Especially if it came from around here. Gee, there's an idea. Sure. If Hitler believed all that mystical crap, there's got to be somebody else who believe it. Maybe dish out some serious cash. All right, so that's enough talking to greedy Wilkes. Yeah, that's enough talking to greedy Wilkes there. Okay, so earlier if you saw Madeline driving by, you know what we're going to do next. You got the... Got the hang of it. Hurts my ears. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's go back to Lermitage for just for Pikachu. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> Pikachu saw the uh, Transformers animated movie for the yeah. first time tonight. Pretty crazy movie. <laughs> <laughs> Sad too. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna follow Miss Boothane. <laughs> He's really getting into it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here we go. She stopped at a place called Coom Sword. And uh, Coom Sword is attached to uh, Leon Mort. So we're going to go inside. Now here's what happens if you use the notepad on Madeline's bus. Mad